Okay, so in this particular video, we'll start off by creating our first HTTP load balancer. So here, the only difference is that the backend service that we would be using would be an instance group. Now, to get more information about the instance group, I have created a separate video for that. And you can check out that video over here. Okay, so once we've created our instance group, the next thing that we'll do is we'll again create an HTTP load balancer, which will have the backend service as an instance group. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll again create the instance group with the instance template that we have. So let's go back to our console. Okay, let's start off by creating a new instance group. Now, before that, let's create an instance template. Now, this was something that you had seen in a previous lecture as well. So let me just do it as fast as possible. So let's click on create instance template. And let's just make this as E2 micro. I'll make this as standard persistent disk. Click on select. And the only change that I'll do is I'll also allow HTTP traffic. And I'll be using the same script that I that I had used in my previous chapter, that is the Apache web server. So I'll copy this and I'll put it in my startup script. So let's do that. Let's paste it here and let's click on create. So we've created our instance template six. So let's use this in our instance group. So let's go back to our instance group. Let's create an instance group. And let's use the instance template six that we had created. And here, the only difference is that instead of one, I will make the minimum number of instances as two. And let's make the maximum as three. And let's leave everything as it is. And let's click on Create. OK, so we've created an instance group. So let's open this. And let's look at both the instances that we've created. So all that I need to do is I just need to open this external IP. And here you can see that it gives me the instance name. So with this instance name, I can easily specify which particular instance this particular page is being served from. And similarly, if I open the other external IP, I can get the instance name of that particular external IP as well. OK, so now that we've done this, let's go and create a load balancer. So to do that, let's just type load balancer. And it will open the load balancing page here. And now let's click on create load balancing and for this example we'll use the http load balancer and again it's going to be from the internet so it's going to have an external ip address and it's going to serve all our virtual machines so we we'll just choose the first one and it's going to be an http load balancer so let's click on continue and the first thing we need to do is we need to create a backend configuration so let's do that let's click on create backend service so we need to give a name for our backend service. Let's just call this as backend HTTP backend. And it's going to be an HTTP protocol. Here we need to mention the instance group that we've just created. So let's select the instance group. So this is the instance group that we've selected. And the port number is basically port 80. So we have an Apache server running on port 80. So we need to mention the port number over there. And here are two crucial factors that you need to consider. One is the balancing mode. It can be either utilization or rate. So what this means is that if the utilization is above 80 percent, then the request of the load balancer would be served to another instance. So you can vary this based on your requirements. So let's just keep this as 80. So once we are done with the load balancer, we'll be also testing this particular scenario where we'd increase the rate of our instance by more than 80 percent. And we will see if the instance serves any more traffic after that. So let's just keep this as 80%. And the other important factor that you need to consider is the health check. So let's create a health check. Let's click on create a health check. And let's give a name for this health check. So here is how the health criteria works. So it checks every five seconds. And if the response on port 80 is successful for two consecutive tries, then it's considered as healthy. And if there are no responses after five seconds, that is it times out after five seconds, two times consecutively, then it's considered an unhealthy response or an unhealthy instance. And the load ban balancer will stop serving requests for that particular instance. So let's click on Save. OK, so we've configured two important things. One is the balancing mode, and the other is the health check. Now, we we'll, so we'll have a failure conditions for both of them after we've created our instance. So let's click on Create. And after that, let's go to the front end. And you can give a name for your front end, but that's not needed. That's not necessary. So all that we need to do after this is let's click on create. And we also need to give a name for our load balancer. Let's just call this as HTTP LB. 
and let's click on create so once you've created your load balancer you can just open this particular load balancer and you'll get an external ip that looks something like this so all that you need to do is just to open this external ip and paste it and it returns this particular response so if you look at this particular response you can see that this particular load balancer is being currently served from this particular instance that is the instance group with this particular name so if you go back to our load balancer and let's open the instance group you can see that it's being served from this particular instance so that's it for this lecture in our next lecture we'll see all the error conditions or all the failure conditions for this particular load balancer so i will see you in the next chapter